In this video, I'll talk about where to search for open educational resources. Unfortunately, there is no one great repository in which all or even most of them are gathered and organized. They're scattered around the web and often mixed in with non-OER content, so finding them is a skill that takes some patience and persistence. Google is still one of the best tools for finding open educational resources for two reasons. One is that it searches all of the internet that's not behind a password. And two is that it lets you filter your search results by whether it has a Creative Commons license. So you can do a keyword search and bring up only results that are open licensed, and therefore potentially OER. The advantage of using Google is that you will bring up a lot of open educational resources that aren't listed in any of the OER repositories. The disadvantage is that some of the content that comes up will be under a Creative Commons license, but still not useful for educational purposes. I want to go into some detail about how to search Google for content that's under a Creative Commons license. First, you have to go into Settings, and from there, select Advanced Search. Once you're there, you will have to choose from the Usage Rights options, specifically the ones marked Free to Use, Share, or Modify, or Free to Use, Share, or Modify even commercially. Let me demonstrate. Here I am at Google, and I'm going to do a search. Now I have a search results list, and it also gives me some options. I'm going to click Settings, and then Advanced Search. Now I go all the way to the bottom to Usage Rights, and I click Free to Use, Share, or Modify, even commercially. Make sure whatever license you choose, it includes the option to modify. If it doesn't, that means you can't adapt or remix it, so it's not a fully open educational resource. Now I click the Advanced Search button. I'm back to my search results list, and now all of the results are Creative Commons licensed materials that are legal to use in courses without having to ask permission or pay royalties. All I have to do is find one that fits my learning objectives and other criteria. YouTube is a great way to find open educational resources that are videos. The advantage is that it's a really rich source, and the disadvantage is that the good is mixed in with the not so good. Let me demonstrate how to use the YouTube search filters. Here I am at YouTube, and I search for my topic. I have a search results list, and there's also a little filter menu over on the top right. I click Filter. There are two filter options I need to choose. The first one is Subtitle slash CC, because that screens out all the videos that don't have closed captions. Open educational resources have to be accessible, so we need those captions. This is my new reduced search results list, and now I need to click Filter again. This time I select Creative Commons. Now I have my final search results list which is all content with closed captions that's licensed under a Creative Commons attribution license. YouTube doesn't offer any other Creative Commons licensing options, but this is the most permissive license, so it keeps things simple. Now all I have to do is look through these search results to find a video that satisfies all my other criteria. Another tool you might use is Creative Commons Search, which you can find by Googling the name. This has the advantage of including only legitimately Creative Commons content, and all content that's been licensed using the proper procedures. The disadvantage is that the search interface is absolutely terrible, and also plenty of the content is Creative Commons but not useful for educational purposes. Because the inf interface is so terrible, I'm going to tell you about it, but not demonstrate it. You should know it exists as an option, but there are better ways to find content. Repositories are a great way to find open educational resources. A repository is a platform that allows storage, preservation, and access to content. Many repositories are also curated, which means that somebody has selected the content for inclusion, or at least filtered the content that was submitted. This is a huge time saving for you because somebody else has ensured that whatever is in the repository meets certain criteria, which should be openly stated by the repository. Also, repositories frequently have search tools that let you filter your search by educational level and other useful criteria, and many of them have some sort of peer review or other form of vetting process in place to help ensure quality control. In practice, repositories have some flaws. Many of them mix open educational resources in with content that's merely free and not open. 
Many repositories fail to remove links to content that has disappeared or moved, so there are dead links. And many repositories are a mixed bag of great content and not so great. And of course, there are many repositories. There is no one master repository and no way to search them all at once. There's a lot of content overlap and a lot of content that's not in any of them. So if you know of a good repository for the kind of open educational resource you're looking for, you're in luck. But you'll never be able to search in just one repository and call it a thorough search. To help you out, I maintain a list of good repositories and search tools for finding open educational resources. It's called the OER Guide, and you can get to it at subjectguides.esc.edu slash OER. You can also Google ESC OER Guide. Here we are at the OER Guide. It's organized with tabs going across the top. Single serving OERs is for repositories that contain primarily smaller pieces of content, like two to 10 minute videos, short readings, images, simulations, and other learning objects. Open Textbooks opens up to a whole guide of its own about how to find textbooks that are OERs. Elsewhere, I have a video about how to search in Merlot 2, which is the biggest OER repository around. You'll find the link to Merlot in the OER guide along with many other repositories. In other videos, I will talk about how to evaluate the open educational resources you find and the process of adopting and adapting open educational resources for your course.